Hi there, it's November 28th and with 34 days left in the year, that means this is episode 300 and we're living through a big rainstorm so I thought in honor of that I'd wear this wonderful rain gear to give this talk. So anyway, happy 300. You've all been a great part of this from Pastor Brad writing it, the other people that have been here all along. Hands up, who's been here all along? Okay, Ken and Rhea and... uh, uh, Anthony, you've done quite a few, and I'm sure there's others, Magdalena. Uh, but remember, if you're new to the channel, subscribe, click a like, share this with a friend, 10 minutes together. So let's get going with the scripture. Psalm 65, verse 4. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest and causest to approach unto thee, that he may dwell in thy courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. Now, some of you are reading the Bible in a year, and today's daily reading is Ezekiel 33 to 34 and 1 Peter chapter 5. Here's your thoughts for the day. You know, I think age is a very high price to pay for maturity. Yeah, sad but true. And Here's a good one. Keep some company with people who inspire you. And the world is full of willing people. Now, some are willing to work, and the rest are willing to let them. Motivation for the day. Now, motivation refers to initiation, intensity, and persistence of behavior. Motivation is a temporal and dynamic state that should not be confused with personality or emotion. Motivation is having the encouragement to do something. On this day in history, 1821, Panama declares its independence from Spain and joins the Republic of Colombia. 1843, Britain and France formally recognize the independence of Hawaii. 1935, Britain's first set of quads and Ernest Michael and Paul Miles are born in Cambridgeshire. 1948, in the United States, the world's first Polaroid cameras go on sale in Boston, Massachusetts, developed by Edwin Land. 1964 was the launch of Mariner 4, the first spacecraft to make a flyby of Mars. In 2016, a plane carrying the Brazilian Chapacanese football team crashes near Medellin, Colombia, sadly killing 71 players and journalists. Here's your personal story today. You can certainly make a difference. Now, seven men are mentioned in Luke 3 who had political, economic, and religious control over Israel. They were... Now, the Roman Emperor Tiberius Caesar, Governor Pontius Pilate, the Tetrarchs, that's a mixed ruling group of four that would repress the differing political and religious needs of the people, Uh, Herod, Philip, Lysanias, along with the high priests Ananias and Caiaphas. Well, they were in power. The word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias in the wilderness. And he went into all the region around Jordan, preaching baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Now, what possible difference could it make for a person with no money and power to respond to God's word when it seemed that others were so firmly in control? How could the actions of one insignificant person change anything? Well, the answer is revealed in John the Baptist's message of repentance, his announcement of the coming Messiah, and his bold confronting of Herod. John's role was to prepare the way for the Messiah, and the world was blessed by his obedience. Who warned you to escape the coming tribulation? Even now the axe is laid at the root of the tree, and the tree that fails to produce fruit will be hewn up and cast into the fire. I baptize you with water under repentance, but he that comes after me is mightier than I. I'm not worthy to carry his sandals. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The world was ready for Christ. The New Testament church began as prophesied. Now today, our task as Christians is to reflect the message of the crucified and risen Savior in everything we do and to tell others about him. God calls each of us to live according to his instructions in the Bible, and our response will make all the difference in the world. Devotional thoughts for the day. Acts 3.25, saying unto Abraham, 
and in thy seed shall all the kindreds of the earth be blessed. References, Genesis 12, 1 day. Victor Hugo's Les Miserables is a telling tale of the convict Jean Valjean, who, upon his release from prison, finds himself graciously taken in by a godly bishop. Hardened by years of deprivation and crime, Valjean robs the bishop of some silver candlesticks and flees. Later, Valjean is caught and brought back to the bishop. Now, Valjean is anticipating judgment and punishment, but he's surprised when the bishop graciously gives him back the candlesticks. This marks a new beginning in Valjean's life. Now, yesterday we read about the great flood that came as judgment upon the spiritually sick and corrupt humanity. If we were to continue in Genesis, we would come to the sad account of the Tower of Babel. Now, as noted, Genesis 3 to 11, that's the whole long descent into unbridled sin. And the tower represented the height of human arrogance, rebellion, and defiance. So it's surprising to read of God's gracious call of Abram in Genesis 12. Without excuse, the nations were judged by their ungodliness. But beyond the judgment was God's grace. And in choosing Abram, God declares his intention to offer a better covenant with humanity. Just as God spoke creation into existence, God begins his new work of redemption by speaking once again. No doubt it was very difficult for Abram to leave all he knew and to go to an unknown place. But this initial command is followed by six statements of what God promises to do for Abram and begins with calling him a great nation and giving him a great name. And God promised to make Abraham a blessing to all peoples on the earth. Through this one man, God would extend his grace to the rest of the world. That's his covenant. And the call of Abraham begins the central story of the Bible, namely how God will work to redeem lost humanity and restore his people back to the safety of fellowship with him. Here's your final thought. The godly mentor, Exodus 17, verse 9. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out and fight Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Webster defines a mentor as a trusted counselor or guide who comes alongside you not to control, but to advise. You know, they are a source of wisdom and counsel. They do not live your life for you, but gently guide you through the potholes and obstacles so you can live successfully. Mentoring may be a new concept for many Christians today, but it's an old idea grounded in biblical practice. Moses acted as a mentor to Joshua. He advised and trained this young man in all areas of life until when it was time to receive the mantle of leadership, Joshua was ready. Many other examples in the Bible that you can probably think of. The church today also needs to amplify this practice of mentoring. Paul was a mentor to such young men as Timothy and Titus, whom he called sons. You can read about that in Timothy and Titus. To the senior women of the church, he also commanded the older women likewise, that they admonish the young women to love their husbands, love their children, to be discreet, chaste, homemakers, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. Look that up in Titus 2, 3 to 5. Now, if you are mature in faith, find somebody the same gender who would be interested in learning from your experiences. If you're a new Christian, seek out companionship of a believer who demonstrates by the fruit of their life that they have an active relationship with Christ, and then seek their help. You know, this is God's plan for leadership training. Every Christian should either be mentored or be a mentor or do both. All right, that concludes today. Here's the facts. Babies are born without kneecaps. They don't appear until the child reaches two to six years of age. And the only domestic animal not mentioned in the Bible is the cat. As one commentator says, maybe that's for a good reason. Hey, you know, the humor today, I, I love the references about dogs, don't you? I, I've got a dog upstairs that every mealtime sits at my table waiting for the, the crumbs to fall off the table. 
And whenever I take her for a walk, she always goes back to the scene of the crime. That's right. She returns to her vomit, just like the prophecy says. And uh, I guess it also says dogs are, are, are liars. So, yeah, anytime I ask her, are you hungry? Oh, yes, yes, I'm very hungry. You know, dogs are wonderful animals. And for anyone that has a dog, you know what I mean. Oh, yeah, I guess I better close off with a closing thought. Lord, I want to do more for you. Help me serve my church better. So every one of you, go serve your church with gladness in your heart, thanksgiving, and praise. Share this around, and, and let's just build the community of God up, shall we? God bless. Thanks for coming. Episode 300. Let's keep going to 365, one year of devotions. And uh, all the people said, amen. So we'll see you tomorrow.